Hey Mechatronic students, this is Andrew Dolan, and in this video we're going to be talking about introduction to the metal lathe over here. So this is one we have in our shop in East Grand Forks, and we're just going to go through the details of the lathe, just a, uh, a walkthrough. What are the different parts and pieces called? So let's get into it. So looking at this machine, um, we'll begin with, uh, I guess our top over here, we've got our controls. The emergency stop, you can push in, you can pull out. We are not using the coolant pump, but this does have an integrated coolant pump. Uh, we're not using it in this case. It has a jog button over here that we can just press that and that'll just rotate the turning lathe as long as the jog is pressed. Uh, again, the emergency stop is a push in and a twist to get it to pull out. Um, another feature here, I guess, is well, as long as we're talking about controls and start and stop on this, um, we're going to bring the carriage over so you guys can see it a little bit easier. Okay, so on the carriage, we have an on off switch that's located right here. This lever is our on off switch. So if we were to kind of pull this away and then downward, that's going to run the lathe so that the chuck is spinning toward us. And then if we kind of push it away and pull up, that's going to run the lathe in the opposite direction. So that's our start stop lever for this. And I also want to point out one more stopping device, and that would be located at the very bottom of the machine that red bar that's located right here. So this is kind of like a panic button, an emergency. It does two things. It stops the rotation and it also um, applies a mechanical brake to the chuck. So we're gonna demonstrate that here for you guys. Um, I'm just gonna slam on that. You guys will be able to see what happens with the chuck as it's rotating. All right. So I'll cross and we'll get it started up. Generally speaking, the guard should be over the chuck when you're operating the machine. This chuck guard helps to protect us against flying chips. And it's also just kind of a, a reminder that that's a danger zone on the machine. So over here, we've got it started up. And just to demonstrate, I'm gonna step on that brake. Three, two, one. All right, makes lots of good noise, brings the machine to an immediate stop. So if anything's wrong, uh, that is your go-to way of stopping the machine is to step on the emergency stop brake that's located at the bottom. All right. So those are the controls. Now let's just pan over here and take a closer look at some of the other features on the machine. Then we already said this is our chuck guard. Well, this is a chuck that's sitting in here. This particular one happens to be a three jaw chuck. And as you look at it very closely, you'll see three separate jaws. That's why it gets its name. This is the chuck key. This is what's used to open and close the jaws of the chuck. All right, so you place material in there, tighten it up, and then never leave the key inside of the chuck. Uh, if this were left in here and someone were to power it up, this becomes a projectile and flies across the room. So you never leave the key inside of the chuck. Okay, uh, let's talk about the speed controls. This particular model has eight different speeds that it can go to. Uh, the fastest being 2000 RPMs and the slowest being 70 RPMs. How you select it is pretty simple. Uh, we just go from high speed, low speed using this knob on the top. And you'll notice that sometimes it gets stuck when you're trying to go from high to low. It may get stuck and that may, you just might need to rotate the chuck a little bit to get it to engage. There's a couple of gears that need to line up in there. So I've got it set up now high speed. Um, this would actually be the fastest that it would rotate. So if we wanna jog and show what that looks like at 2000 RPMs. Um, let's see. Oh, I still have this down over here. We'll jog it. All 
All right, so that's going to be the fastest speed at 2,000 RPMs. And then we can change it to its lowest speed, which would be 70 RPMs. All right, which is a little better than once per second that the thing's going to rotate around. So a big difference between 70 RPMs and 2,000. So you will adjust the speed based on the material that you're cutting. We'll get more into that later. Uh, this guy is a knob that determines the direction of the carriage travel. So let me just show what you're talking about there with carriage travel. I think I'll get it set up for 300 RPMs. And we'll run it here and I'll show you carriage travel. So this whole assembly here is the carriage. And the carriage can travel back and forth manually or automatically by pressing this carriage travel button. So this is basically an engage and disengage. So back to our knob over here. We'll shut this off. Basically all these speed adjustments or, or gearbox changes are made when the machine is turned off. We would never try to change the speed while it's running and we'd never try to change any of these gearbox settings while the machine is running. So you saw that before the carriage traveled in this direction and now when we switch it the carriage will travel in the opposite direction. So let's get that fired up and demo. So here we go. We're turning on our... Oh! I moved the lever but it didn't engage the gear. So I've got to do it. There it went. It wasn't all the way over, so it actually put it in a neutral position. And we had no carriage travel. So let's get it started up again. And now you guys can see that the carriage is moving to the right. Prior to that, it was moving to the left. So go ahead and stop it. All right. So that is the knob to reverse the direction of the lead screw. That's what we call this guy right here, the lead screw, okay? The other uh, gearbox settings down here um, will allow you to adjust the speed of the lead screw and it's timed with the chuck. So this is used a lot for threading applications. If you wanna create threads using the lathe, uh, we would select the number of threads per inch based on the charts and the selections down here. We'll get into some more examples of those later. But in general, for most applications, unless you're th making threads, cutting threads on the lathe, we don't have to worry about the gearbox that changes the lead screw um, RPMs. Okay, so we'll go through, I guess, some carriage um, components next. So this handle is going to allow you to move the main carriage from left to right and it has a number of uh, on the dial here you can see both in inches and millimeters um, a little uh, dial that indicates how far it has traveled so this is the carriage the whole thing this guy is called the cross slide it moves in and out in this direction all right, so we can feed our cutter in this way, that way. And then after the cross slide, we have the top slide. And the top slide has a couple of bolts that we can loosen and we can change the angle at which the top slide comes in. Sitting on top of the top slide, we have the quick change tool post. So this is an example of one of the tools we use for cutting on the lathe. We'll get more details about what different tools look like. But just know that that's the quick change tool post. Pop it in and this lever locks it into position. All right, so a couple of other features. We already talked about the on off switch. We already talked about engaging and disengaging the whole carriage feed so we can automatically feed the carriage in. And then this guy is interesting in that um, it allows for automatic feed of the cross slide. So we'll demonstrate that here. Uh, you'll see that when I engage and disengage this, the cross slide handle is going to move. So here we go, we'll engage. 
Um, something is... Something is not right. Let's see. Oh, I think I, I bumped something and it got out of whack. There we go. The lathe was basically in neutral. So now we should be able to see... Trying to get my cross slide to auto feed here, and it's not. There we go. I had it for a second. Huh. I might have to investigate this. I can feel it trying to grip. So I wonder if something's out of adjustment on here, but this should be making our cross slide move forward and backward, but something is not quite right mechanically. Anyway, I'll have to get that repaired. It's not something we use very often. Uh, most of the time the cross slide is manually fed in and out. Okay. Um, other features of the lathe. If we were to point downward, we'll have a chip tray. So here's the whole bottom tray. This can lift up and out. Uh, when you're doing so, kind of watch the cords that are underneath here. And when you're done with the lathe for the day, this will catch all of the chips, kind of sweep them into the tray and then empty that tray. You can pull the whole thing out and put it, the chips into the recycling bin. Okay, uh, toward the end of the lathe, We've got a f another feature here, and this is called the tail stock. So I'm going to jump across camera here, and a couple of details. The tail stock, we can move in and out, so a lot of times we're doing drilling operations. We can install a uh, drill on this end. That's got a taper lock to it that's going to stay engaged. To remove it, you would just back up the tail stock all the way. It'll hit a stop, tail stock comes out. And sometimes we put other things in there, but generally when you put them in, give them a good snap and the taper locks them in place and you're good to go. So this can be slid in and out and it's got a small lever back behind to lock it and a large lever that we can loosen and allows the whole tail stock to move forward and backward. When you want to get it in a position, grab the larger lever, lock it, and well, when it's locked hard, it shouldn't be going anywhere. Okay, so those are the basics of the metal lathe, and I think we're good to go. So uh, there'll be definitely a lot more uh, content, but this is just a quick walkthrough on all the levers, buttons, you know, things that they're called. And in D2L, you guys can find the manual for the turning lathe. I've got an electronic copy in there. And that's got some nice pictures and diagrams of all of the different components that make up the metal lathe. Catch you next time.